Yeah. Although, <laughs> let's give Wide Awake its credit. Wide Awake is the first movie we have ever watched that answers the look at that natural thing, right? Because Robert Loge, he's like, how do you know there's a heaven? And he's like, look at, kid, look at the snow. The snow is all the proof I need. <laughs> and the kid's like, well, actually, that's just crystallized water falling down because of the pressure and the temperature changes. And he's like, whoa, kid. You just destroyed my worldview. <laughs> oh, now Grandpa's going to go do a rail off a black dick. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because it's the only legal thing that the voices tell me to do. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, uh, you know who was dead the whole time? <laughs> who God. Was? <laughs> God was. Oh, A nice. Nice. Nailed it. Yep. Six cents. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli. How are you this fine afternoon, sir? I hate the kid. I hate him. Oh, God. I want, I hate him. <laughs> He's no Haley Joe hatred. Osmond, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? It's not going to be getting an arc in Entourage, that is for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we watched Wide Awake. It's the story of M. Night Shyamalan becoming... More and more desperate as he tries to write his way past the problem of evil. <laughs> and he doesn't. Nope. So we just watched 90 minutes of atheist 10 year olds beating William Lane Craig in a debate. And then and it's just like, smoke bomb. Jesus. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Stop following me. I'm under the frame. You can't see me. Stop it. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love escort missions, but you wish they all took place in a water level, <laughs> you will love this movie. This movie has by far the most unlikable character we've ever seen. And we watched a movie about a rapist. <laughs> we've watched several now. Are you talking about the main kid? Yeah, I, I am. Li I like the main kid. Oh, oh I hate him so much. He represents everything bad in the whole world. In the whole world, if if the aliens came and they were like, show me the evil that your species has, I wouldn't show them Hitler or Stalin or some serial killer. I'd be like, here's this kid. Here's this kid. He thinks he has a question, so he's just wrecking everyone's ears. Just trying to do his honest best in the world. He's not trying to do his best. Play ninjas. You want to do best, you play ninjas. <laughs> Motherfucker. Oh, God. And so we, we, the, all right. So the weirdest thing about this movie is that if after watching it when it first debuted in theaters, you'd said to yourself, boy, I bet this guy's next movie gets nominated for six Oscars, you'd have been right. Bizarre. Right? This was the movie <laughs> that M. Night Shyamalan made immediately before Sixth Sense. And, you know, sometimes when you watch like an uh, like the early work of a great director, you can sort of see hints of his brilliance. I'm not saying that M. Night Shyamalan is a great director. He directed a great movie once. But like, and, and it's very obvious, right? It's very obvious when you watch this and what came after it, that it's just like, oh, no, no, he just hit on one good movie, right? Yep. I, I can't describe how much this movie is going for. You guys like the movie Sandlot, right? Remember <laughs> Sandlot? I did. I mean, like don't that movie. don't think too hard about Sandlot because <laughs> there's a lot of assault culture in there. And um, in the Sandlot? Not, yeah, it is some child abuse. Yeah, don't think about it, but you know that that that's what we're doing here. In yeah. our movie. Catholic oh. school, am I right? I mean, I realize every <laughs> time I rent a movie on Amazon, it comes up and says, did you purchase this by accident? But it felt way more accusatory this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is there anything uh, that you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, uh, I'm going to say best worst overweight Irish kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fat Frank, yeah. Uh, this felt personal. Felt pretty personal. <laughs> so yeah, the main character knows a fat kid at school, and he kind of shits on the fat kid the whole time. But Frank is clearly supposed to be involved in some kind of like redemption at the end in a sane movie, but it just never fucking happens. Like, nope. All all the kid does is sweat like 
Heath did a sit up and then <laughs> vomit everywhere and shit himself at the end, and then it's over. That's that's yep. the whole character. There's the no redemption. End. He's just fat kid. That's it. There's so many characters like that. Like Brickman is like that in this movie. Freddy is like yeah, yeah. I was gonna go with and just hearkening back to what Eli's already said. I was gonna go with best worst voice. All right, this little kid, <laughs> it's not so much what he represents that bothers me. It's his goddamn whiny, bitchy, mom, I want this voice that he brings to every single line. He has the worst <laughs> voice in this movie, and Rosie O'Donnell and Dennis Leary are in yes. this movie. We're not fucking around He's here. He's inquisitive. He's inquisitive and, and charming. And Robert Loja, yeah. Oh. All right, I was going to go with best worst adult with the thing. Because Rosie O'Donnell is just like, baseball! But not, you know what? I'm going to switch it last minute. I'm going to bring a little positivity. Best, 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 best friend, Dave. Dave's amazing. Fucking- <laughs> I love Dave even best. more than Josh, the main character. Yeah, Dave is fantastic. If, Agree. If your id could be in a movie, it's Dave. <laughs> yeah, Heath's id particularly. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, he is beautiful. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we've got an awful lot of plot fades to get to, so we're going to keep the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the random inconsequential actions that are Wide Awake. From the makers of Wide Awake. Has anyone seen my shoes? Nobody's ever seen shoes, Eli, but doesn't mean they aren't real. Comes another cloying premillennial schlockfest about pretending not to know what words mean when a kid says them. No, sorry, my my actual shoes is what I'm looking for. Your shoes, my shoes. Who says there's one pair of shoes? That's that's weird as a construct. Because pre-9-11, we were all just kind of jerking religion around like it was a stamp collection or something. I do. I'm looking for literal shoes. Do you understand? Aren't we all looking for shoes? Looking for shoes. The object? Shoes? Clothing item? I'm smiling at you with warmth in my eyes. Stop. Just tell me where my warmth shoes are. Stop. in my eyes. Oh. Look at me. Nope. You're adorable. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And judging by the audio, it seems like we're going to have some opening scenes sportsing. But luckily, it's just sportsing audio, so we don't have to look at it. <laughs> uh, we got uh, grandpa and a little kid throwing around a pigskin. That's the audio we're getting. The visuals we're getting as a kid's drawings that we're scrolling past. Mm-hmm. We get also grandpa. We should point out is played by Robert Loja. So it's supposed to be a grandpa playing catch with his kid, but it feels like a mob hit. Are you ready, kid? <laughs> you gonna do this the right way? You a big man? <laughs> Yeah, but basically, Grandpa throws him a football, and they both say, we sure do love each other, and neither of us will ever die, huh? (laughs) And then we get the opening of the movie, which is Mom waking Josh, the little kid who'll be the main character in the movie, uh, waking him up for school. This is his (laughs) first day of fifth grade. And it's time for the first of this movie's adorable shenanigans. He just can't wake up for school. Literally. (laughs) Yeah, that is a major bit they will use throughout um, for humor, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they, they, well, because the movie is called Wide Awake, and it's all about how he was very sleepy until he found God, and now he's wet. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. I retract. Never mind. This metaphor is fucking amazing. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. This shit Holy has shit. come together. What? Such good writing. <laughs> Damn. I apologize. Like, I genuinely apologize to the movie. That is good all right. Stuff. All right. Yeah, Mr. Just, Shyamalan. Sorry about listening. every bad thing I ever said about you, M. Knight. Except the shit about signs. That was the lady in the water. Why the fuck you That's thinking? the fucking title. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus. All right. And okay. So, so dad in this movie is played by Dennis Leary. And at first I thought, oh, fuck Dennis Leary. But then he didn't do anything at all in the movie. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yep. Like you literally could have had him played by like a plastic bag with different emotions drawn on it. Cardboard cutout of Dennis Leary would have done just as good a job. Uh, yep. Yep. All right. So he's getting ready to go to school. He sure does fall asleep a lot while he's trying to get ready. But eventually he's ready to go. And we realize that A, he goes to a Catholic school. And B, this movie was made before that scandal broke. 
<laughs> yeah, Catholic school in Pennsylvania, just to be yes. extra specific. And we know this because of his uniform, which I have down in my notes as Elton John's slave outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These uniforms are rough. Like, everyone wearing that uniform in this entire school, everybody's got it on. It's a uniform, but that will not stop them from beating the fuck out of everyone wearing that uniform. <laughs> yeah, right. Was, like, that's how that goes. They just all gather in a circle. Boo, nerds, all of us. Turn <laughs> all of us. Circle up. <laughs> Punch. You punch right. Okay. Every, God okay. damn it. Everybody punches right first, obviously. <laughs> Idiot. It's like a family reunion of Highlanders in there or something. And Daisy Chain. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. So then the movie says, no, no, we're RCC with a little title card that reads September. The questions. And I wrote, is the question, <laughs> why do I have to dress like the schoolboy night at Chippendale? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before he wanders off to school, he has to go into dead grandpa's room and have a dead grandpa moment. A little Norman Bates grandpa thing. Yeah. This is weird. yeah, right. He puts on his coat, he grabs his pipe, sits in his chair, and he's just like, mm, I wish I could die of cancer, too. <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah, and this leads us to the first of many grandpa flashbacks. This one in the form of Josh was sick one day and grandpa took care of him. Right. And the only point of this flashback is that he's like, I will never die. He's like, Grandpa, I had a nightmare. He's like, I'm never going to die. I'm Robert fucking Lozier. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Look me in my eyes. I will never die. My <laughs> voice is made of secondhand smoke. I'm immortal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's sitting there smoking a fucking pipe right next to the sick kid going, no, you're fine. <laughs> Walk it off. He's got a pipe in each nostril. It's it's. <laughs> But mom and dad are in a hurry, so they pull him back from his reverie and they drop him off at, at Catholic school. But before they before they do, like Dennis Leary has this moment where he turns to him and he's like, hey, man, don't go all atheist in there, okay? <laughs> or, stop. Because yeah. uh, the, the whole point in here is like, I'm just a curious, wide-eyed kid. But, but it, they're spooning mouthful after mouthful of sugar into your, like, mechanically held open jaw. So it's not an inquisitive kid. It's that You're My Cuppy Cake song played at an Abu Ghraib prisoner for the 75th answer in a row. <laughs> well, right, and the thing is, too, is that, like, you know, the, the kid is in narration saying, a lot of people say, I ask too many questions. I'm like, yeah, but in a public school, that's not a huge problem. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really come up in public school. Jesus. Okay, so he walks into school and everyone turns to like assess his bully ability immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's got that uniform on. Again, they all do too, but they don't give a fuck. And we learn here that you can wear the shorts with the tucked in shirt and the tie and the jacket, or you can wear pants like a normal human being. <laughs> so like he's gone with the shorts. If pants are an option, you got to go pants there, right? Like, <laughs> shows that. That's crazy. The shorts make you look like you're going to get, like, raped by a cartoon hammer in a Pink Floyd video. It's terrifying. <laughs> so, yeah, so he walks in, and now it's time for us to, uh, to meet Rosie O'Donnell. She's a baseball nun. No reason she's a baseball nun. She's just got a baseball, and she's like, this is my thing. You guys remember that movie with Tom <laughs> Hanks, right? Yeah. Huh? Carry over. Perfect. Taking the check home. <laughs> and what is she wearing? It's not normal, like, nun stuff, is it? it I mean, I know. She looked like, like a boys to men pirate is what <laughs> I was seeing. Yeah. She, she looks like she's about to announce she's a pun-based Halloween costume, right? Like, strength <laughs> out the habit or something. I don't know. Just, just like there's a very clear... Yeah, Equal right. Well, contribution of baseball and none. <laughs> the thing is, okay, but see, the thing is, is that what we've combined here are the two most notoriously weirdly dressed humans, right? People who have dedicated themselves to religion and sports fans, <laughs> right? So when you put that shit together, you've got some weird <laughs> outcomes. She looked like Sarah Huckabee Sanders at that last press conference. She does. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, what are the odds? Like, I think I feel like they're better than one in ten that the last press conference Sarah Huckabee Sanders does ends with a gun in her mouth, right? <laughs> oh, she goes <laughs> full Bud Dwyer. <laughs> mm. Now, wait a second. You might hurt someone with this thing. 
<laughs> but she does it with a chainsaw in my head. She's just like, <laughs> hey, well, they have not made a gun that can penetrate my skull. <laughs> just her own head right off. It'll be amazing. All right. So, but yeah, but she's a, <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell is a baseball nun and she teaches religion class from a textbook called This is Their Fucking Movie. Jesus is my buddy. Amazing. <laughs> And and this is where Josh asks about baptism and whether or not if you're baptized, you're going to hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, so my uh, my aunt, she's not baptized. Is is she going to hell? And Rosie and I was like, no, no, that's she's not going. To hell. And then somebody else is like, and same with my dad's friend, Steve. No, still no. Just relax. And then one of the kid jumps up. He's like, and my friend Seth Greenberg, too. She's like, well. Uh, Okay, well, yeah, he Seth Greenberg's going to hell, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, yeah, he killed not, Jesus. Not so. Stephen, yeah. <laughs> right, and this is supposed to be the, his teachers just can't answer his questions. But of course she can answer his questions. He's at a Catholic school. If he was in a public school, this scene would make sense. But he's talking to a nun. I've never met a nun who, <laughs> who wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, your friend's going to hell. I wear this hat all the time. Do you think I hadn't thought about that one? <laughs> yeah, but, no, but look, I mean, that's the fucked up thing, though, is that the point of this scene, though, right? The wink and the nod is tee -hee, sure is easy for a group of 10 year olds to destroy our religious beliefs, right? <laughs> like, it's not that they, like the thing is, is that no, the, I mean, yes, the nun would have words to say at this point to distract the children. But no, they don't have the answer to that because their religion actually is. Yes, God burns people in hell forever for believing in the wrong God or the right God wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, so the Bible's wrong then. And Rosie O'Donnell has to just be like, ah, uh, yeah. I'm a lesbian. I'm, 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 know what to I'm say not right Roseanne. Now. Please do not. <laughs> Perfectly nice. Yeah, person. she basically just errs and errs and ums until the bell rings, like this fucking sympathy bell rings here. <laughs> um, and then they go to another class where we have to listen to kids read because we deserve that. This is their public <laughs> speaking. I thought that was what? impressive that they offer that, at least. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it doesn't go well, but I'm glad they offer that. That's a real thing. It doesn't seem to be working, but that's nice. Yeah. All right. But this is where we're going to meet Dave. And Dave wants out of this boring ass class. So he has to pull a ruse. Yeah. Uh, he went with the sneeze vomit. <laughs> <laughs> sneeze vomit. I mean, I get it. I get it. I never thought Classic. of that. Though. Gets you out of class every time. That's good stuff. <laughs> I sneeze so wish. hard I shat myself. Yeah, man, get out of my class. <laughs> yeah. Get out. I get it. Yeah, so he leaves the class and then he motions to his buddies like, hey, hey, Josh, you're the main character. You have to go with me or this is just weird. I just sneeze vomited is all. <laughs> so, so he follows and the narrator tells us that Dave is a daredevil. He sure is a pretty cool kid. He's the best. He is. But while they're now like cut in class, this is also where we meet Brickman. Brickman! <laughs> this is a disturbing oh. fucking character, right? Yeah. Brickman Brickman doesn't hold up to the age of diagnosis. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I love how they, they react to him, too. They're just like, ugh, fucking Brickman, really? Let's what run away. He's the worst. Like, I can't fucking deal with this kid. It's the first day. He's going to do that, like, flinch thing. You try to walk past him and he won't let you. It's, ugh, fucking gross. Yeah. Yeah, but it's OK. So like there are a million ways you could do the weird kid. They just went with rampant, undiagnosed schizophrenia with this kid. Right. Like he's so lootly. <laughs> he literally starts rolling around on the floor, acting like a chimp. Yep. And the soundtrack, by the way, is love. And it's like, huh, kids with mental illness. What could be funnier than that? Yeah. Hey, hey, kids, how you doing? It's your friend Eli, the podcaster. Yeah, when kids used to have mental illness, they were just weirdos. It was a lot of fun. Everyone just kind of ignored it. And then they, <laughs> you know, they died in high school. But it was all right. It was all right. <laughs> oh, Jimmy Toddles. Yeah. He used to take his shirt off and shit into his own lap. This was... <laughs> this was... This was known as just chemical imbalance when I was a kid. But yeah. they didn't do anything. They were like, we know it's a chemical imbalance, but that's fucking all we know, and we're just not doing <laughs> yeah, anything. Tilt right. him on his side? Yeah. I don't know. Should we give him different chemicals? I don't know. Nah. Just, uh, like, drugs are bad. We have a whole thing. Drugs, he's, kids. He's shat in his lap. That's funny. Bad. 
And and the saddest fucking thing about it, though, is that like at the end of this scene, the nun like drags this kid away by his ear for being mentally ill. <laughs> She's like naughty, naughty, stripping down and thinking you're an animal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, kids. <laughs> All right, so now Josh is running through the halls with his buddy, wondering if this God thing is bullshit after all. Oh, and this again is where David starts to win over our favor. He's like, uh, hey, David, do you think that God is real? And David's just like, no, stop talking. Cars, let's play cars. No, dumb, dumb, fucking Holocaust, baby cancer, problem of evil. What the fuck are you talking about? Of course not. Yeah, right. No, like fucking Dave destroys it at 10 pretty well. He's like, uh, he's like, do you believe that God is real? And he's like, nah, man, problem of evil. And he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's that's bad. Yeah, shit. All right. Well, let me just set this clock to 90 minutes. I will prove you wrong. <laughs> Starting now. Spoiler, he will not. No, nope. yeah, best, worst. No, but it turns out God is real, too. Okay, so now the bell rings and it's time for all the kids to go out for recess. Yeah, these kids get released <laughs> like the zombies from World War Z. <laughs> <laughs> and the narrator's telling us that he sure would like to play football with the big kids, but the bully won't let him. This is where we meet Freddy the bully. <laughs> Who is 45 years old. Yeah. He's <laughs> enormous and old and it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's like a 10-year-old boy and a giant old Italian guy just manhandling. It's like every barbershop. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like, like you know, again, there's so much in this movie that's like, huh, isn't that cute? But like, it, it should have been, I, I feel like in 98, this was already terrifying, but maybe it wasn't by then. Because this is also where he wanders up on the fence where they separate the sexes. Oh, this right. movie is filled with like, ah, uh, Catholic school. Remember when they took your blood and put it in that kiddie pool and the nuns <laughs> would bathe in it every May 1st? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, fond childhood. And you're just like, what? Come on. <laughs> That's the whole movie. My notes for this movie are entirely, I hate this kid and what? Come on. <laughs> Yeah, so he looks over the fence and he sees the girls playing and he's like, I don't like girls yet. My balls haven't dropped. And this is also where we're going to meet the uh, the fat kid that, that Heath did his best worst about. That's right. <laughs> Baby Heath. Okay. Baby Heath's like, hey, do you want to play ninjas? And he's like, no, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. By the way... Fun little anecdote. I signed into our little Skype session here as Fat Frank, and both of these guys laughed way too hard. I, <laughs> that out there. I just wrote in my notes. Offensive. I mean, to be fair to Joshua, who is Fat Frank going to sneak up on? You want to play yeah, ninjas, I mean, Frank? <laughs> like, I blame this movie because, like, this huge fat kid comes up and he's just like, hey, man, you want to play ninjas? And I so wanted to watch that fat kid play ninjas, but it's the movie's fault I'm horrible. I wouldn't even have known about this kid if it hadn't been for the oh. movie. Amazing, amazing kid to pick to be wanting to play a game called Ninjas. Like, <laughs> I was just picturing this enormous kid trying to, like, hide on a ceiling. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and, like, scare somebody and just, blam, face plant. Okay, <laughs> lost again. Lost again. <laughs> like Batman in Justice League. <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> Are you hiding behind that soda oh, machine, Oh, Fat Frank? Because I nope. see you. You're right there. You're reaching around. You're getting doesn't, yourself a nope, soda. No, doesn't matter which direction you face. And you're putting yep, in a bunch of quarters. How many are you getting? I can see your arm pushing the button. <laughs> All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press your diabetes button. <laughs> All right. So then we get, okay, it's that night. And what the shot actually is, is the kid is crawling into bed with his parents from under the blankets or whatever. But for just a minute, it looks like dad's performing analingus on the mom. Yeah. Because cause the, the narration here is, mom and dad sure were busy. And I'm like, I mean, take some work. <laughs> and we just see mom laying on her side and some movement right around her ass in the blankets. And I'm like, they were busy. Damn. <laughs> Didn't Dennis Leary have a song about the asshole? Yeah. I think he wrote a song about that. An homage. But, but he's actually there to ask them if he can play football. And his parents are like, no, we're both doctors and that's not going to happen. Yeah, like, what are you going right. to do? You're going to be a kicker? Come on. Yeah. It's 1998. We told the NFL to fix their sport 20 years ago. They've done nothing. They will continue to do nothing. <laughs> Spoiler for 20 more. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you can remember the words I just said to you. Yeah, let's keep it that way. No football for you. 
And by the way, if you're thinking to yourself at this point, oh, this is a football movie about the little kid trying out for the foot. No, it's not. No, nope. it's not. That will serve a function in the first act, sort of. In fact, if you think this movie is about anything, you're wrong. Yeah, yeah that would have been a very significant plot point, which was apparently against the rules. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Shyamalan was just like, no, it's about nothing. He was doing it full George <laughs> Costanza during the writing room. Absolutely. <laughs> So he's in the bed. He's asking mom and dad if he can play football. And suddenly Julia Stiles is in the bed, too, which was weird. <laughs> she's in this yeah, movie, right? And I didn't realize that was her. She, they, he's, she's the sister, right? And I didn't realize that was her. And I was just like, well, fuck, is Eli fantasizing now? There's just a 10-year-old <laughs> boy and Julia Stiles in his bed? What? All right. Here we go. <laughs> It's it's weird that they hired three like name actors to be bit parts in this. Like, right? Dennis Leary, Rosie O'Donnell, and Julia Stiles were all like names. None of them have more than like five minutes in the movie. Yeah, same with Robert Loja. Yeah. And Robert Loja, yeah. Football coaches Al Pacino, guy at the store in the background, <laughs> exactly. Robert De Niro. What's happening? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be hilarious if the movie did that. All right, but so, but, but this scene resolves when mom says, "Give me one good reason why you should play football," and the kid goes, "Dead grandpa played football." Boom! Drops a mic, slithers back out from under the blankets. Yeah, kid, take some <laughs> advice from the child of a superior athlete. Do the check off you can do, honey. Do the check off you can do. <laughs> Come on, grandpa played football with like a fucking newspaper for a helmet. It's fine. He only, he only tried to murder the whole family once and. It was, didn't happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> he was shaking too much. So, dropped yeah. the gun. We were fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So now we cut to football practice. And boy, are those football accoutrements too big for him. Ugh, it's so boring and saccharine. So boring and saccharine. <laughs> Come on. The equipment was so big. And <laughs> so big. <laughs> it's like going to someone else's kids like Christmas concert. Yeah. Like, what? I'm not fucking you. Let's get out of here. This Why whole, am I here? <laughs> this whole movie had that feeling, yeah. But coach is all coachy and intense, and wouldn't you know it, Josh gets in a fight with some other kid. So now he's in trouble. So he's off being in trouble and thinking about grandpa some more. And this is where we get the brilliant transition to the next uh, grandpa flashback, where he goes, my grandpa believed in two things, being good at football and 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 G Jesus, the next one is about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and they're in church, and this kid is just like molesting Robert Loja's face while he tries to pray. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. You Robert praying? Loja is so fucking angry about this kid touching his face in real life. Just like two seconds after the cut, he's beating the fuck out of this kid acting. <laughs> they're pulling him off. You praying? You praying? Grandpa, grandpa, you praying? You praying? <laughs> Just poke in his face. Stab you. <laughs> but then, okay, so then the priest stands up and he's like, you know, hey, where are my sick people at? And grandpa gets up, right? And the and the kid's like, wait a minute, is grandpa sick? Yeah. And like, come on. You didn't realize Robert Loja might not be in perfect health, <laughs> kid? Really? <laughs> Looks like fucking lung cancer came to life. You didn't, you didn't see? The leather goblin with gout over there that maybe that guy might be sick. <laughs> so, yeah, so he remembers grandpa fondly for a little bit, realizes football ain't his thing and decides that he's going to tell Dave about his secret plan. That's sort of going to be what this movie has instead of a plot. Kind of. All right. <laughs> So now we go over to his buddy Dave's house and Dave is stupid fucking rich. Oh, I love mm. Dave. Rich. <laughs> End, of <list. laughs> End of list. That's it. Rich. Rich people are better. It's great. <laughs> so. Yeah. And the, again, this scene opens with, he, he's like, you know, Dave had a really big house, but he spent most of his time in the closet. Um, Guys, that doesn't mean what you... I knew a kid like that too. Faith like that too. It's fine. He has his own dance company now. <laughs> oh, good, good. But he's like, yeah, he spent all his time under the stairs, and I'm like, big coke habit. Did he have? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, but yeah, they're playing. They're playing. We cut to them playing space pirates in the closet under the stairs. 
And so that I don't have to listen to fucking M. Night Shyamalan try to write space words for very long, they quickly change the conversation to girls, right? Dave's like, so, hey, man, what's up with your balls? You pubing yet? Or uh, still want to talk about you want to, uh, boring space want to get into a little jerk party? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and Josh is like, mm, not right now. No, no. And then he gives, he gives this great little speech. He's like, yeah, man, come on. Liking girls is just a bullshit biological reaction. Let's, uh, I mean, let's look at some dicks, too, if we're going to do this. Right. Like, let's make it fair. You just show us the one. Let's flip a coin. Heads, I'm gay. Tails, you're gay. Here we go. <laughs> coin on its edge. It's what? edge. <laughs> Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. That was a deep reference. <laughs> All right, so so, but Josh doesn't like girls yet. Um, instead, he wants to talk about his secret mission to find God. And again, Dave is amazing. He's like, oh, oh cool, you want to find God? Hey, do you remember when I thought that there was a ghost haunting my laundromat and that was stupid? Yours is stupid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and Josh was like, nah, my, adults believe in mine. It's going to be the whole movie. And he's like, oh, lame. <laughs> His, his literal example, Dave's like, okay, well, that's fucking stupid. You're on a mission for God. You remember when I thought staring at a purple lamp would make me the Hulk, the superhero, the Hulk? This is way dumber, man. And <laughs> Dave, like, you might as well call for a doodly-doo. Just like, <laughs> uh, it's Josh in a padded room staring at nothing. You hear that? You hear that nothing? That's the sound of looking for God. That's you. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah, no, Dave reacts exactly like I would. And then we cut to Josh flipping between the 11 various news channels that are showing all the natural disasters of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, what? Like, I was so confused what the movie was about. I had no idea because so far at this point, it's just showing us the problem of evil over and over and over again. That's it. Yeah, I feel like the first three quarters of this movie were written by M. Night Shyamalan because William Lane Craig had promised to like, trust me, the argument I'm going to give you when you write the letter. And then he was just, oh, damn it. Turns <laughs> atheist into Christians is just three simple questions. <laughs> All right. Put that in a movie. Three questions. <laughs> All right. So and then he, but they're having dinner and his sister, Julia Stiles, is like, hey, mom, a famous cardinal who knows a lot of stuff about finding God. Should that be your mission is coming to the movie soon. <laughs> and this kid, like you can see this kid decide he's going to talk to the cardinal, whatever it takes. And you just got to wonder, that's a weird day for the cardinal, right? Hi, Cardinal Hammerson. Yes, uh, come in, my boy. Come in. Uh, I want to ask you something, but mm -hmm. can this just be a secret? Um, sure, sure, yeah, secret. In, in fact, I, I snuck down here to your office. Nobody knows I'm here, and nobody can ever know. Um, okay. You know what? Okay. I'm, I'm worried someone's going to overhear our conversation in case it get loud. So I'm going to take off my pants and stuff them under um, the door. Wait, what? Now for the coconut oil. Okay. Hell of a day. Hell of a day. All right. That was dark. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it was bound to happen eventually. Um, And okay. But I love too that the sister says at this point, she's like, you know, some people say that Cardinal Geary can talk to God. It's like, I can talk to God. I can talk to Batman. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? That's not a thing. <laughs> All right. So we go back to the school and now Rosie O'Donnell is humorously mixing theology and baseball. <laughs> she is baseballing the crucifixion. But like, I feel like they asked Rosie O'Donnell to vamp it because it's got nothing to. No. She's just like bottom of the ninth, two strikes. Jesus is, uh, what is a, when do you lose baseball on purpose? <laughs> because sacrifice. you are mad at yourself. <laughs> Come on, you're in a league of their own. D up, you got this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love that movie. Right, and honestly, this scene runs like they asked her to vamp and then they felt sorry for her. So the sound effects guy cued the bell, right? <laughs> <laughs> and she's supposed to be a huge Philadelphia Phillies fan because this is set in Philly. 
And I thought she was about to like start weeping as she described Joe Carter beating the Phillies in the World Series <laughs> walk off home run. But uh, no, it was it was a Jesus metaphor that she didn't she didn't land. No. Yeah, no, no, she struck out on it. See, I did better than you did, Rosie. Oh, crushed it. Mm. <laughs> oh, and then okay, so this is where we get the quintessential like, boy, does that mean something different? Three years after this movie comes out line where the kid says in narration because like him and his buddy are about to pull a caper so he can go talk to this cardinal so in narration he opens this up by saying you know catholic schools a lot like being in prison <laughs> <laughs> you get dicks in your ass when you don't want them <laughs> yeah all of our notes are don't drop the soap dark at night dark so, yeah, so they go Ocean's Eleven and Under, I guess, on this one. <laughs> right. And Dave, like, dresses up in a mop bucket and shoots himself down the hallway. And again, I, I maybe I'm just, like, a grumpy dude, but, like, all of this, like, childhood shenanigans just, it felt like someone was painting my face pink with cum. Like, I just could, it was so revolting. I fast-forwarded anytime someone wasn't talking. Yeah, like, you know how, like, once in a while you'll go back. Oh, okay, so I grew up in Michigan, and they have the Fago soda there, and you can't really get it anywhere else or whatever. And I loved it when I was a kid. You go back and you drink it now, and it's just like, wow, that's just sugar with bubbles in it, right? Yeah. That's this fucking movie. <laughs> this movie is drinking that soda that you loved as a kid and going, how the fuck did I, like, why am I still alive? But it feels like the CEO of Fago is sitting there next to you being like, good, huh? Just as good as it always was, huh? <laughs> the best. The best. Sorry. And then, like, since then, you found out that he raped a bunch of people yeah, at right, the company. Right. And you're like, hey, man, actually, I really want to talk about 19. No, <laughs> just tell me how great the soda is. <laughs> just, just one day. Just give me one day where I just get to talk about my soda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also sorry uh just circling back did you use the phrase it was like my face being painted pink with cum yes <laughs> yes i did okay do you guys um, not come pink okay no no don't even explain anymore that's cool <laughs> all right that's all i wanted that's Great. all i wanted to know Thank you. I got worried for a second. because Sorry, stupid, stupid thing to stop on. Obviously, that's what you meant. <laughs> this is like the red urine conversation all over again. These guys <laughs> had me going a little behind the scenes. For a week. <laughs> Go to a doctor. Let's call the 911. It's fine. So, <laughs> it's getting weird again. <laughs> then what happens in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So he's got his, his buddies running the mop bucket interference <laughs> thing. So he sneaks away. But before he can get out of the house... The littler kid in his class comes in and says, hey, man, you better disable that alarm on the door, right? Or actually, he just yeah. sort of like gestures towards it. Yeah, the, this kid's apparently um, mute. And um, I was confused by that and that he's helping with this. Yes. They, yeah. They're going to wrap it up in the end, though. This is will pay the fuck off. <laughs> Won't it? Though? I don't want to tell you how yet. It's going to pay off. Yeah, but okay, so he's sneaking into the girls' school for the most boring possible reason, right? Ugh, and this is where we get the children meet cute. He meets the love interest who the movie will forget about. Yep. Yeah, Hope. Mm, subtle. It's yeah. a movie Hope. about Hope finding God where the love interest <laughs> is named Hope. And again, I don't want to be that guy, but like, with the perspective of adulthood, having children have a meet cute is weird. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on. But they nailed that whole, they called back the like biological reaction speech he gave earlier. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, just yeah, like, his first it, erection in this scene. It was yeah. like, I'm sorry, I just got confused by you. I'm having a biological penis uh, <laughs> reaction. What? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Again, the, the CEO of Fago Soda is turning to you and he's like, that kid's got a boner. <laughs> <laughs> now you laugh. <laughs> this is a joke I'm telling you about a child's <laughs> penis. <laughs> what? We can't talk about that? He's 11, I mean, 10, 11 years old. There's boners. That's what well, we, we can't talk about that just because those are the kids I molested. Oh, OK. Reality. OK. And Aziz Ansari can't do stand up anymore. Come it's on. people like you. Subject object, Eli. <laughs> so. <laughs> the object is an 11-year-old penis. <laughs> 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 All 
All right, but but so now Hope, to her credit, is immediately in on the scam, right? She sees a boy wandering around the girls' school, and she's like, you and me under the stairs right now. And he says, hey, yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate it and everything, but I'm looking for Cardinal Geary. So he sees this cardinal, <laughs> and it's supposed to be this reverent moment for him, but the guy is dressed like burlesque George Washington. I was so confused. I was like, okay, and now there's an 80-year-old man dressed as Little Red Riding Hood. That's yes. weird. They were just mentioning a cardinal. That's a distinguished figure. Oh, my God, that's the fucking cardinal. <laughs> Is that is that normal cardinal wear? Do like yes. do they normally dress like that? And like I Google imaged it because I was like maybe they did it. Nope, every cardinal dresses like Patty Lapone's wedding <laughs> with like the British magistrate wig. Yeah, too, the apparently. Whole thing. All right. Uh, sub question: When uh, let's say a bunch of eleven year old girls see a cardinal in real life, are they like cardinal? cardinal <laughs> beetle mania, my friend. Beetle mania, beetle whole thing. Mania. Yeah, Swooning, full beetle mania. Booby signing, whole thing. All right. Yeah, yeah. That's where they go. They go with this. Like he's like, oh, there's the cardinal. I can go see him. But just then, class lets out, and this cardinal is swamped by his tween admirers. This cardinal and fucking sorry, I don't know who tween girls like now. So I'm just gonna make my cell phone uh, sound old. Um, Justin <laughs> Bieber. <laughs> Elvis Presley. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis <laughs> Presley. That's it. Beatlemania. Yeah. So, but, but he's like, oh, darn. Now I can't talk to the Cardinal that can talk to God because there's girls all around him. But the Cardinal goes into the men's room. So the little boy helplessly follows a Catholic Cardinal into a bathroom. And at this point, yeah. I'm just like, okay, if this guy gets molested, it's on him at this point. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And uh, it doesn't get much better when we go into the bathroom because we go in and the Cardinal, I thought for a second, I was like, okay, the Cardinal's doing blow in the bathroom. Yes. That's, that's weird. <laughs> that's what I thought too. Thing. I thought he was going to be like, hey, kid, perfect timing. Didn't think you'd be here until later. But no, you know what? This is, this is actually great. I didn't think I was going to be doing blow quite yet. But no, no, it's perfect. It's perfect. Come on. Come on. <laughs> but no, he's not snorting coke. He's dying because he's old. Right. And, and basically, and, and then th th this is we're writing him out all together because basically the kid, Josh, looks at this guy and he's like, well, fuck, you're no better than my grandpa. I'm looking for one of those undying cardinals. <laughs> Adults refuse to give me a straight answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he leaves the bathroom finally. And uh, Julia Stiles is there, his sister. And he's like, yeah, oh, that was depressing. I don't think God talks to that guy. He was. He just offered me blow or or to blow me. Something with blow. He said it was something, but it was I, not, not God's friend. Definitely not God's friend is my conclusion here. All right. So then we move on to act two, denoted with a title card that reads December, the signs. And I never thought I'd be wishing that I was watching signs. Get it? It's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> I, then I spent the rest of this movie looking for call forwards to the other things. I was like, oh, is there going to be a kid doing a split? <laughs> is something gonna is something gonna be happening no no <laughs> nothing will be happening he does not give that one away go on an airbender so <laughs> that was Shyamalan yeah yep. yeah that was Shyamalan. oh god we've done a couple Why yeah right keep doing right? this this is not our Stupid. first I quit the show. <laughs> All right. So we spent a couple of, of, of minutes on the boy does the cafeteria food suck scene. But again, it's not like a cutesy. Oh, the lunch lady makes me eat yucky mashed potatoes. It's like in Catholic school, we were forced to eat our food and clean our plate in a horrific Lovecraftian hellscape. So what we would do is we'd pass these glopped food that we chunked together onto a single tray, which would then be stolen away across our wet <laughs> clothes and our nubile skin until dumped in a trash can. <laughs> Shenanigans! <laughs> you're just, it, you're turning to the Fango CEO, the and all of a sudden he's got fucking <laughs> tentacles coming out of his eyes, and he's like, let's talk about my soda. <laughs> it's this movie. <laughs> you don't eat your meat, how can you have any food? Yeah, yeah, right. like, it might as well turn right. into the wall again with more rapey hammers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 
All right, so now it's time to go to fifth grade confession. And weird. This scene pisses me off, right? Because it starts off with this brilliant comedy setup. The narrator's going like, and then it was time for confession. We didn't really have uh, sins to confess, so we just made things up to tell the, the priest. And I'm like, okay, a kid making up a confession could be really fucking funny, but we don't even use that setup, right? Nope, not even a little. Instead, he's got, <laughs> nope. it is scene 74 of 867 where this kid is like, hi, I'm a child. I don't understand that God's not real. I'm going to ask you a direct question and you're going to be pretend I'm asking a metaphorical one. You ready? Where's God? <laughs> He's in your heart. You mean literally in my heart? Do I? You just asked a question to a question. He's behind every leaf and under every... No, no. I mean in a location. Give me like coordinates. Just let's... let's. So, <laughs> so I check all the leaves? No. Uh, go oh, away. God. Yeah, it, it, was, it was so sad too. It was like... All right, father, whatever the fuck. You're like 60 and you never met God. Obviously, do you want to like kill yourself? Was that a giant waste? <laughs> the priest is just like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was. Yep. Yeah. The kid's like, did you ever feel like your job is kind of fucking useless? And and the guy's like, well, you know, you don't know about the molestation perks. So I can, I can see why you would think about that like that way, but. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how much money I have stolen and how many crimes I have committed, my son. Oh, you get out man. of here and look for literal answers to metaphorical questions. Go on, check those leaves. You, can we just talk? Like, how are you? You're not <laughs> doing, I feel like nobody asks you how you are. Do you want to <laughs> say, honestly, Josh, um, gay. I'm gay and this is ridiculous. Yep. This is, it's, it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> All right, and then we go to the locker room because Catholic school really didn't just mean child rape back then. And it's, Dave, again, calls it out. He's like, hey, uh, apropos of nothing, because this will literally never affect the movie, is it healthy for adult women to watch naked children in an unsupervised environment? And Josh is like, <laughs> shush, this movie's about vagaries equaling, stop it, Dave. <laughs> stop it. Nuns and moms don't count as women. Yes, the fuck they do. Look at porn. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, just Google that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, we have to go back to uh, Brickman, the mentally ill kid. And they're like, oh, no, Brickman's running around naked with his underwear on his head. It's the best. <laughs> and the nun's just like, oh, Brickman. Yeah. He's like, please help me. They're like, ah. <laughs> Classic. Classic. What, what a he never gets in trouble. He gets sent to the headmaster, but he never gets in trouble when he runs around naked. What the fuck? I don't, I don't understand. Oh, it's he still has the underwear on his head when he comes out, too. So weird. Huh. Yeah, so we go to gym class, and we have the moment where all the kids have to do arm circles because the coach is so mean. Yeah, they're doing physical torture now. This movie is a heavy-handed documentary about North Korea. It really is, though, right? It's <laughs> there, there, it, There's so much like, we had a lot of fun in the gulag in this fucking movie. So, yeah, so they do their, their arm circles, and then it's time for, <laughs> I love this, it's general ball-using time, right? That's how gym class worked, right? <laughs> they, they just have a lot of balls, and they fucking, you figure it out. I mean, <laughs> I, I've been in that gym class. <laughs> Like gym teachers, sometimes you guys had that sad gym teacher who's just like, oh, okay, boss, go." <laughs> yeah, no, the there sub. you go. Yeah, here you go. Are you how old are you, kids? Ten, too old for the parachute. So, yep, uh, balls. <laughs> I'm just trying to blow this whistle. I have too much spittle. I <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna make the noise. I'm gonna sing the noise. As an adult, <laughs> you'll look back on me and realize I'm I'm an alcoholic. But now. <laughs> I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I always wondered where they got that suit, by the way, that like matching enormous sweatsuit. I like, well, I'm going to need those. Soon. I think when you miss your eighth uh, child support check, they just send it to you. You just get one of those. They, yeah, they'll just give you one. <laughs> I wanted to see his closet. Like, it's just like 10 different colors of matching sweatsuit. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> All right, so, and then speaking of things that never come back or matter, this is also the scene where Josh accidentally kicks a soccer ball into the bully's face. Yep, never matters. You were thinking it was going to set up something. He just <laughs> nope. kicks the ball at him and then runs away. Bullies, right? Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Yeah. <laughs> Joke over. No follow-up. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. 
That's how they do every joke in this movie. And he still won't play ninjas with the fat kid. Yeah, no, he's still being mean to the fat kid. Being a dick. Just play, whatever. So It wouldn't be funny at least to watch fat kid play ninja? I mean, come on. Yeah, at least that. All right, so that night, he's looking up God on the internet. And I just wrote in my notes, atheist in three, two. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But he's using like... DOS yeah. to like access the DARPA net. It was like 1998. There was like Windows and search engines for kids. Like, guys, weird. No, this is the golden age of internet atheism. I mean, you'd look up some atheism stuff and an algorithm didn't think that you wanted to watch videos about white supremacy. It was the best, guys. It was the best. <laughs> Yeah. All right, you have gone out of your supremacist? way to fool the algorithm. You go on YouTube. So. You go on YouTube and you type in atheism. If you can make it four clicks without them being like, do you want to talk about the difference oh, between head skull shapes? YouTube just, no, YouTube knows me. If I go to YouTube and type in atheism, it's just like, here are a bunch of videos of you. You More girls shit. roller skating. <laughs> so, he's always, he might be searching for something else, but it's just... Girls roller skating. <laughs> I just get bacon porn. Yeah, they know this part. <laughs> all right. So th- then we cut to him at dinner and he's like, hey, guys, we should all go on a vacation together to Rome. Right. And again, this is scene 75 of 867 where the adults are like, oh, you want to see the Pope because you're looking for God. Glances, not. Hey, all right. Come on. Come, we need to tell you that we're all yeah. just pretending. <laughs> right now, to, to be fair, though, this is 98. That's still John Paul. A little less creepy than if it had been Benedict. <laughs> a, a little bit that we know of. Yeah. Well, right, right. Yeah, exactly. But then they have like a, they, they, they like fake uh, proof of their, their sign of God here, right? Because his friend told him, hey, man, it's going to snow. We're going to have a snow day. We won't have to go to school. But like in all of the fucking real times that anyone ever said that, some snow starts to fall like they said it would, but it's not enough. So fuck them. Bullshit. We're just going to get a delay. Fuck. I didn't do homework. Damn it. (laughs) Right. Every time. All the teachers are going to be mad too. But there is just this brief moment where he's like, it's snowing just like CNN said. Anderson Cooper is God. (laughs) But he works out, wakes up the next day, there's not enough sun. And he's like, fuck it. I bet he's gay. I bet he turns out to be gay. (laughs) Stupid. But he sits at his desk on an exercise ball. (laughs) Anderson Cooper would be such a good God. Oh. Oh. (laughs) I mean, Imagine that he's good world. Good Jeopardy. He's pretty smart guy. Sure. All right. So it's the next day in school, and they're in singing class. Apparently, we have a professional chorus and one kid in there. Fucking why? It up. Why are they impossibly good <laughs> at singing? So ridiculous. All of a sudden, fucking school for boys. It's also the Broadway cast of Billy Elliot out of nowhere. <laughs> it's insane. And then the fucking the priest that he was uh, confessing to earlier he goes like hey guys if we sing good enough maybe God will hear us and tell us if our grandpas are in heaven wink right at Josh yeah it's so weird this whole movie is like what if adults humored a kid about the tooth fairy until he ripped all the teeth out of his skull (laughs) the movie (laughs) right yes it is all right, so after after singing class, he goes home, and this is when like he gets home and he sees that mom has cleaned up the dead grandpa mausoleum room, right? Ooh, and he makes such a horrible whining sound for the next 16 minutes of this movie that I literally muted it and read it in CC. If anything happens in sound, you guys are going to have to tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. Don't worry. No, no, you're That's safe. a blanket statement for the rest of the movie. Absolutely. All right, so now it's time for him to have a little heart-to-heart with Rosie O'Donnell. (laughs) This is my favorite scene. I love this part. It's such a weird place to go for humor because Rosie's like, so I heard you were uh, were, uh, being a Muslim. And I'm like, what? Wait, (laughs) what? (laughs) But it turns out the kid in his search for God is now trying on all the different religions. Oh, this kid's the best. You guys don't like this? You don't like this kid? No. He's practicing... Spite Islam at this point. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, and and what I love here is that Rosie is trying to say, "Kid, I need you to stick on our team. It doesn't make any more sense, and we're not sure we're right, but I need this. It's really important that you're on our side." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but then she kind of cracks a little bit. She's like, "So did Muslim praying work?" Or <laughs> I'm just I'm just asking for a friend. I, I don't know. may or may not He's be a, a lesbian. 
So, <laughs> and the kid's like, ah, mostly just made me think about the carpet odor. So that's no, not really. It's more than know. I get out of Christian prayer, but you know, it's still not good. And I love too, like she, she's saying like, look, I understand you're looking for God. A lot of people spend their whole lives searching for God. None of them ever find him. It's weird that we don't consider this a clue. Why am I in this film? What Ooh. purpose does this serve? Uh, you sad about your dead grandpa? Let's switch it around. <laughs> she also asks him about his uh, Hindu experiences because he's been doing that. Apparently he was fasting to be Hindu because he mm. read about Gandhi or whatever. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I fasted for like for like six hours. I mean, it wasn't that long. Does six hours count as a fast? <laughs> and Rosie O'Donnell looks at him. She's like, does six hours count as a fast? Take a look at me. Seriously? <laughs> six minutes counts as a fast for Rosie O. Look like Steve Bannon before the curse. Obviously, I have no idea if six hours counts as a fast. This is a two shot. Every time they cut to you, they signal me and I start to eat something. Just so you know. <laughs> Yeah, so they have the little Hanukkah joke to end. She's like, can we talk about this on Tuesday? He's like, no, it's Hanukkah. Get it? I'm also Jewish. I'm a Jew, Muslim, Christian, and atheist, Hindu. You're fucking anti-Semite? Yeah, I got Hanukkah that day. <laughs> and then we get him shopping with his folks, wondering why his mom and dad are being so darn nice to him here lately. Oh, uh, and it's time for Freshman Philosophy 101 and a nine-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, this like the, he, we have this whole scene where he's at the toy store realizing that the toys are meaningless to him because of the impermanence of life. Oh, I wanted mom <laughs> to get super duper real here. Hey, kiddo, what's up? Oh, hey, mom. I think I just had a revelation. Oh, what's that? You know, I used to think toy stores were magic, but now all I see is plastic. All the magic is gone. Aw, come here, kiddo. Let, let mommy tell you something, okay? Yeah? You see, magic is for assholes. Wait, what? Listen, Joshua. See, the world is filled with fascinating, true things like science and art and philosophy. I mean, there are brilliant ideas and unique human relationships out there, and, and, and everybody knows that. But, but some people, honey... Some people aren't happy unless those things, you know, pop out of nothing like fucking Gargamel. And you know what, hun? Fuck those people. Uh, but but if, if we're all just going to die in the I end. I know. I know. Who gives a fuck? You're going to live forever? Would sunsets be prettier? No. Would music be more beautiful if it was played by a fairy? No. You can roll that attitude right up into a tube and fuck yourself with it, kiddo. I mean, whether we're rotten bags of meat or a computer simulation, it doesn't matter. Ultimate truth is for shitholes, hon. Boring, empty, thoughtless shitholes. How about we get you an Iron Man, huh? Yay, Iron Man. There we go. Oh, God, I want that movie. Oh. I want that movie so fucking bad. And then <laughs> we'll like from this movie. point on, it's just about them diagnosing Brickman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's help your friend, huh? You want to do that? Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we, we go over to Billy's party. Who's Billy? Who gives a fuck? It's, it's Billy. He's got a party. He's at Billy's party. But he, again, childhood religious shenanigans. He's meditating. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of this, like, boy, all the religions except Catholicism sure are weird, huh, in this movie, yep. right? Absolutely. But luckily, he gets distracted by the love interest here, and we, we get some more biological reactions, which are oh, yeah. adorable. This this was fun. Yeah, he's meditating with his two buddies sitting next to him, and he's like, you guys fucking suck at meditating, because the whole time they're like, my face itches a little bit. It's itchy <laughs> on my face a little bit. He's like, shut the fuck up. We're doing a thing. <laughs> And I got to say, when I've tried to meditate, it does, your face does itch and it's really hard to deal with. That's like a real <laughs> thing. I think that's fair. But he yells at them and they go away. But his eyes are closed at this point. And then his girl comes up, sits next to him. And he's, he, he's amazed because he looks up and, you know, he's like, holy shit, I just turned a black boy into a white girl by meditating. That was awesome. <laughs> the Mormons were right. <laughs> and I'm 
I'm erect. <laughs> feels confusing and racist at the same time. And good, and good, but bad. And this is where he can't talk. And she says, just say what you're thinking. And listener, listen to me very close. If a woman ever tells you to just say what you're thinking, never do that. Don't, Literally don't never. do that. Ever, I want to fuck your hair. What? See? <laughs> don't do it. That's always what you're going to say. Black <laughs> nope. penis. Get a line. It. Write it down. <laughs> memorize it. That's what you say. What are you thinking? Boom. Say your line. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> just say it right away. I just, when she said that, I wrote in the, <laughs> in the notes, I'm like, ah, the innocence of a girl learning to never ask that question again. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's her growing up movie where you, where all of a sudden we cut to her therapist where she's like, and then he said. <laughs> <laughs> But luckily, we are interrupted by Dave, who's the fucking best, who's going to go jump in the pool because he's a hard fucking nihilist. <laughs> Dave does not give a fuck. He's jumping in. It's the middle of the winter, doing it, and he does it. It's the best. Yep. Yeah. And Dave is, well, Dave is being cool. Josh is inside boring the shit out of hope about God. Oh, uh, but Dave, and Dave does it too. Like, so cool. Everybody's like gathered around him and he's like, he pauses and he makes everybody like, Hold on his big pregnant pause. And then finally he's like, okay, let's roll. Like he's fucking Nick Cage and gone in 60 seconds. It's the best. It's like, low rider, Donnie, Donnie, low rider, let's roll. Oh, it's so good. I love Dave. I love Dave so much. Dave is the ship. All right. So now we're at school letting the kids out one at a time. They, they have the, the thing where they all have to sit in the room until their parents show up or whatever. Uh, we'll, we'll see this shot several more times. And Dave and, and Josh are talking and basically Dave's saying like, dude, hope is way out of your league, right? Yeah. He says, hope's way out of your league. And then he destroys the entire conceit of this movie. He's like, look, either there's no God or there is. And he doesn't care that you're looking for him. Let's fucking party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Dave is the hero of this movie. So that night, he's sitting in his grandpa's death chair, wondering if maybe this God thing all is nonsense. And he begs God to show him a sign. God does his usual nothing. Like, like this is so fucking sad. Again, like this is the, the 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 Fago rape thing. This is so fucking sad. The kid is running through his house asking mom, dad, the sister, everybody. Like, did you guys see anything that could even be misinterpreted as a religious symbol? Anything? It's vaginal orgasm? You guys? No? No? Anybody? No? Didn't happen? All right. Yeah. Fuck. I look like an idiot, God. Jesus. I need one sign. It's sad. This is where I realized for me what this movie is. This movie is a Christmas story. You ever see that movie? You'll shoot your eye out, right? Yeah. You talk to some people and they're like, I love a Christmas story. And then you say, why? And they look at you in your eyes for an extended period. And then they go, you'll shoot your, you'll eye, shoot out. your eye out. <laughs> yep. That is this movie. There's nothing redeemable about this movie. There's nothing redeemable about Christmas story. And yet there's just like a cult of human beings who like ate a special pill in fourth grade. And this is a movie they think is okay. <laughs> <laughs> the tongue on the... On the pole when it's cold? Drink more Ovaltine? Are you fucking kidding me? You'll shoot your eye out. Fuck you. All right. So. <laughs> I love that movie. But then we get another grandpa <laughs> flashback, right? And this is a flashback to after grandpa knew he had cancer. And so the kid says like, hey, grandpa, are you scared? And grandpa says, no, because when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. And the kid says, well, then why would you bother with the chemo? And the dad says, shut up, shut up. That doesn't, shut doesn't up, work when you keep. Oh. Were they going to get chemo here? Is that what that was? I I, I don't know. Because they're like they're wa they're walking out. Like I thought they were like taking them to the vet to get put down. The way they <laughs> it sure said seems like it. Yeah. Did it not seem like that? <laughs> the way they're talking about it, it seems like that's what's about to happen. <laughs> Although, let's give that. Wide Awake its credit. Wide Awake is the first movie we have ever watched that answers the look at that natural thing, right? Because Robert Loge, he's like, how do you know there's a heaven? And he's like, look at kid, look at the snow. The snow is all the proof I need. And the kid's like, well, actually, that's just crystallized water falling down because of the pressure and the temperature changes. And he's like, whoa, kid, you just destroyed my worldview. <laughs> oh, now Grandpa's going to go do a rail off a black dick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Grandpa was really clinging hard to that snow. <laughs> 
Well, I love to because the kids says, well, grandpa, they taught us in school that the, the, the snow comes from this. And, and the grandpa's like, yeah, but that's not what I'm, you know what? You're going to have to find your own proof, you ungrateful little fuck. Yeah, is yeah. my proof going to be an easily explainable natural phenomenon? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. It is. Yeah. It is. It's <laughs> cognitive dissonance. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that flashback ends and he's still in the death chair and God hasn't sent him a sign. But just then, fucked if it isn't snowing because God. Man, if it hadn't snowed, Josh would be on this podcast right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We could get Josh on this podcast right now. <laughs> Something tells me, yeah. All right, well, thankfully, the title cards are here to tell us that we're in Act 3, or I'd have no fucking clue where we were in this plotless morass, but we're gonna about to get a third one, which means we're about to get a break. First, I'm going to give Act 3 the hard sell here. Has this giving Act 3 the hard sell bit run its course? Is it just extra work for me that no longer delivers any humor value? Could I just introduce the interstitial and be done with it? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the plotting conclusion of Wide Awake. We're all a little tired here. Well, damn it. No, you laughed. Now I, it's not. Obviously, there is still humor value there if you laughed. But so I got to keep doing it. Is that you, God? Indeed it is, Joshua. The time has come for you and I to talk. Oh, good. I have so many questions about my grandpa. And you can shove those questions in your dick hole. Sorry, what? Your dick hole, Josh. Take your questions and shove them nice and tight right in your urethra. You've spent this whole year torturing everyone around you, worrying your parents, freaking out your teachers, cock-blocking your friends, and why? So you can be the kid who gets a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the Almighty. But, but Mr. God, my, my grandpapa died. Oh, oh and... did someone die? Well, fuck my face. You're the first kid who has ever had someone die, aren't you? The first person, in fact, in the whole of the universe who loves someone who I then kill. I mean, why in fucking duck Wisconsin should you just grieve and get over it like a normal kid? No, you gotta try out all the religions and bother the fuck out of everybody for a calendar year. But I just wanted to... To be special. Fuck you. Look, Joshua... I'm a Bronze Age construct, and you know it. I'm not real, and if you ask real questions or think real thoughts about it for half a second, you'd know that. Hell, listen to your friend Dave. That kid's fucking awesome. But you know who's not awesome, Joshua? You. Can, can I at least ask if Grandpa's in heaven? No, no fucking shot. Read the kid stays in the picture, and you'll know why. Oh, yeah, I have read that. That's crazy. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. When we last left our hero, he thought incorrectly that snow equaled God. And apparently January through April can go fuck themselves because we're going to start act three with a title card that says May the answers. So, OK, so we're 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 at reading class some more. Yep, And it's time for Brickman to steal a picture and escape the school <laughs> <laughs> yep that's what happens yeah he goes full Sinead here he grabs a picture <laughs> of the Pope he runs outside climbs up on the monkey bars and holds it over his head there will never be a reason for this character or this scene or a resolution no. that is the end of Brickman's timeline is him having a breakdown in the rain with a picture of the Pope I think I think maybe he thought he was like John Cusack, say anything style, but with like a picture of the Pope instead of a boombox. I don't know how else. Oh, how right, else to right. No, because he had broken up with Catholicism because Josh had broken up. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't say any words, so it's very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the second mute kid at this school that we've met. Yeah, yeah. They have a a, a plethora of mute kids. Yeah, so and 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 the kid says, like, you, you know, Josh in narration says, you know, most people thought Brickman was crazy, but I was on this God kick, so I kind of got it. I kind of got where he was coming from. I kind of ignored it. Anyway, I will literally never talk about him again. Nope. So then he has to go to the principal's office for some reason, and while he's there, he hear, he overhears the bully's parents wondering how they're going to pay for this expensive child rape cabal, this school that he goes to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and again, the movie's like, hey, 
maybe this is what the movie's about. Nope. No, it is not. Nope. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's like, oh, man. He's going to have to go to public school and learn about evolution and not get molested. We got to do something. <laughs> like, that seemed like the plot might turn out like that. Nope. No plots. Absolutely not. Yep, and then they're all taking turns at the drinking fountain and Fat Kid wants to play ninja some more, but Josh doesn't want to play with him because he's fat. Just play ninja. I was so mad. Being such an (laughs) asshole. So then they're all outside one day when Josh notices that the bully is poor. Right, he has this like Eli moment. You can just, this this is like the pivotal moment in Eli's childhood where he suddenly realized that some kids are poor. Yeah. Exactly. And if he had responded by being like, gross, I'm going to go hang out at Dave's house. This movie would have won me back, but he doesn't. <laughs> when, when Eli had this moment, he was the bully and the poor kid, though. So yeah. <laughs> right. Lower middle class. I was lower middle class. So- I fixed it, everyone. I fixed it. I'm going to fix it. Patreon.com forward slash God awful and you can fix it. <laughs> Please fix it. <laughs> I just bought a house. <laughs> Fill with poison. All right. So apparently they're outside because there's an important Easter ceremony that the girls part of the school is doing, right? This insane cult oh. behavior. They come out in white dresses and they, and I know, I know you all really did this. You can just save. Is this, this real? Fucking, yes. What the fuck is it? What were they I, doing? Who knows? The Saint de Santa Maria blah blah de blue be rapid manca manca. <laughs> it's some horrible Bronze Age tradition that this movie wants me to look back on like the fucking Wonder Years theme is playing. Wow, what's it do with the Saint? It's fucking horrifying. <laughs> yeah. But of course, among the girls who's going up and laying their wreath found for Jesus to pledge their virginity to him or whatever the fuck this is about is Hope, the love interest girl. And she decides to give her silly crown of flowers to Josh instead of Jesus. Yeah. And then gets violently dragged away by a nun. <laughs> <laughs> will th- will this was- ever come back in the movie? No. no. It was so weird. It was like, here's a flower. I will be physically abused by a nun for this right now. And <laughs> Side, tackle. Like, Side tackle. Side so, tackle. Yeah, the nun might as well like walk over slowly, fucking lock eyes with Josh and chop this little girl's head off with a sword. Like, <laughs> and then just never address that ever again in the movie. It's, it would have been equally impactful. Well, if I'm not mistaken, this is the last we ever see of hope too, right? Yep. It's the end of that movie. M. Night Shyamalan is killing off all the plot lines this movie isn't. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of which, it's time for the bully to have a, an exit from the movie. Yeah, you're right. Yes, yes. We're just writing them off one after the other. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they, so the, the bully's getting picked up, but he's never going to come back because he's too poor. And they have this moment where, like, Josh runs out to bid his bully farewell because he secretly realized that he wasn't to BDSM this whole time, I guess. It's who knows? We don't care about this character. Just because the movie cares doesn't mean I care. (laughs) Right? The movie even asks. The movie's like, why do I have any sympathy for this asshole with the main character? And he's like, I I don't know why. Yeah. I have no idea. It would make no sense. Like, if this was a movie, this would make no sense. If he... Opened up the door and he was just like, hey, Freddie, fuck you. This whole <laughs> you movie would have won me back over. bastard. Or, but no, or, or if he opened up the door and Freddie was like, nerd, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie's dad hits him with a cream pie. <laughs> fuck you. Drives away. Nice. Good job, son. Classic. <laughs> and because we are on a plot murder spree, it's time to get rid of fat Frank. Yep. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, so, okay, so then we go to a field trip to a museum, and I I was thinking at first, it's like, oh, a museum, this ought to knock that finding God thing down a peg or two, but no, we're not going to do anything at the museum except make fun of Frank's childhood obesity, right? Yep, just just shenanigans of getting stuck in a turnstile with baby Heath. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so, like, the, the fat kid tries to go through the turnstile along with Josh and they get stuck and so now it looks like they're having anal sex right in front of everybody. Well, I mean, 
the turnstile spoke thing is inside of that Frank. <laughs> <right now. laughs> <what's> <laughs> yeah, I guess he is having anal sex now that yeah. you mentioned. <laughs> And then, because they're never going to redeem this character, he's like, I'm going to vomit in your mouth now. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently that happens. Yep. Yeah, right. And then, like, that scene is over, right? They get him out somehow or whatever. And the fat kid's sitting uh, alone by himself thinking, man, I sure am fat and dorky. And so Josh decides to go over and talk to him and say, hey, you can hang out. I'm not going to play ninjas with you. I know that's sort of what we had set up. But you want to make fun of this statue or something? And the fat kid's like, you've shown me some amount of attention. Now I won't commit suicide. He might as well just look at camera and go, resolved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now everybody's taking a test. And what a comically large pile of eraser shavings this one kid has accumulated. Oh, my God. There's this panning shot. And it's the Dante's Inferno of pencil management. There's a kid who's erased like <laughs> hundreds of erasers. There's a guy who's got pencils, but they're like the, the Fago soda guy has them for fingers. And he's slowly like running them in and out of his mouth and they come out sharpened. It's a hellscape. <laughs> this movie is a goddamn hellscape. Yeah. And OK, so keeping in mind that we are late in this fucking film, Josh in narration starts talking about all the brain cancer symptoms that his buddy Dave has. Yes. I mean, that would have been a plot with, I mean, granted 15 minutes left in the movie. <laughs> Great time to fire up a plot, <laughs> but they don't even fire up that. Plot. But they don't nope. know. <laughs> yeah. So mild affliction, but, ah. Uh. All right, but but now it's time for Josh and Dave to pull off another caper to fix the test that Dave just fucked up, right? Yep. They're going to sneak in and steal the test. And if you're wondering, what does this have to do with the movie? Nope. Nothing. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. You know, <laughs> just, that's just what this scene is, is all. Yeah. Yeah. The the mute the mute kid helps him, though. He yep. like alerts him to the, to the teacher who's coming when they're trying to fix the test. And then they hide behind the desk and don't get caught. And that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the fucking scene. When the nun walked in and they were hiding, I just I just wrote in my notes, say you already got molested today. Nobody likes sloppy <laughs> seconds. <Don't> God. <laughs> if she saw them and they just start like fucking, that that would be the move. I would say. <laughs> you're not you're not getting in as much. You're not you, you didn't get in trouble for cheating on the test anyway. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. All right, so, okay, now it's later, I guess, and Dave sure has been missing an awful lot of school lately, so when Josh's mom picks him up, he says, hey, can we go visit Dave? He was sick and missed school, and I want to go and find out if it's contagious, and mom's like, sure, hon. Absolutely. I'm not a participatory parent in any way, shape, or form. You want to drive, too? Mom is going to take a nap in the back. Go for it. <laughs> right pedals go, left pedals go less. And I love, okay, so they get to his house and the narrator basically comes up and says, this is a significant scene. I can tell you <laughs> everything that happened that afternoon. And I wrote in my notes, I hope so. You're the narrator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If the narrator was just like, ah, oh, I don't fucking remember. Can you just... <laughs> <laughs> it was was there a blue. pause? Like 10 minutes or left. I was just, I checked out by now. I thought we were... <laughs> <laughs> there's, not, there's not enough time for a plot. Can we move on? Can we just end it? Jesus. Great. Apparently not, though, because he finds Dave under the stairs, all bloody in your sh and shit. And you're like, oh, he does have brain cancer. And this whole movie is about how awesome Dave is going to die. But nope. But no, no, he has epilepsy. I'm not trying to like downplay. I know it's tough. You know, if you have epilepsy to get through life with epilepsy, but, you know, it's just epilepsy. No. It's a, like, they just hinted at brain cancer moments ago, and now they're like, and he bruised his lip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. He's gonna he's gonna have to take good care of himself. But I mean, gonna he's be gonna be fine. Good deal of ice, probably. Should, That's there are four minutes left in this movie. Gonna fuck him right up. <laughs> he's gonna have to like miss out on a whole generation of VR. Can't probably. get on Twitter. It's the worst. <laughs> All right, so now uh, Josh's parents are filling him in on Dave's condition that night, you know, and they're basically going like, you know, don't worry, it's bad, but it's not like, you know, make a movie about it levels of bad. He's, he's going to be 
It'll be yeah. It'll it be would fun. be an anti climax. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now it's time for him to like resolve his search for God and realize that it was all a bunch of bullshit, right? He goes like final journal entry. We did in fact evolve from filthy. Mo- oh shit. We have another grandpa flashback. Hold on. Hold on. One more grandpa flashback. Yeah. And this is the grade, whatever foot races. We, yeah. we see the kids racing. It's I, wa- I wanted day. so badly for fat ninja kid to come running in 36 minutes later. So <laughs> what's like I just got a wild card. <laughs> oh, oh. A wild card. <laughs> what grade are we on now? Did I win their race? Because technically I <sighs> Who wants to go to Paris with me? I'm vomiting. <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell? No? <laughs> Barking up the wrong tree? Yeah, fine. <laughs> All right. So, but Josh gets ready for his race and he turns to one kid and he says, Hey, I'm going to win this race for my dying grandpa. And then he runs, but he falls down because he's a shitty klutz. This movie teaches an important lesson. When you're a loser, stay down. Right, but there's this moment here, and I, su- I I don't know what they're going for, to be honest. The nun, you know, the kid falls down, all the other kids run on. Nobody bothers to check on the kid who's just laying there crying and grabbing his leg. The nun's Good. just like, well, he didn't Good. fucking yeah, win. Good, yeah, he lost. He'll learn to not be so <laughs> shitty. Thank you. Two votes. But Grandpa cuts her off, right? He won't let her announce the, the winner. She's like, he's like, hey, my, my grandson hasn't finished yet. She's like, yeah, but he didn't win. We know he didn't win. Take a look at him. Do you, do you see him finishing gracefully right now? Is this a positive <laughs> First, thing second, in, third, because that's head? all we have trophies yeah. for. But this scene is a perfect metaphor for the movie. It's about a little piece of shit who bothered everyone and took up everyone's time because he's a self-centered loser. The movie, the flashback, <laughs> the lifetime. <laughs> He might as well he might as well vote for Trump because he can't find any stamps at the end of the scene. <laughs> <laughs> and this reverie ends, by the way, with Josh burying Grandpa's old shirt. What? That's Insane. Weird. So anyway, so that's over. We've we've apparently we're done with Robert Loja. We're done with the flashbacks. He's over Grandpa's death now. And now we cut to him hanging out with Dave at the hospital. Right. And I should point out that if this movie had ended at burying the shirt, we couldn't have done it. But luckily, we've got this scene. This scene's going to bring it home for us. Oh, for fuck. They, yeah, they, <laughs> they, they spent this whole movie making us love Dave, and then they ruin him in this last fucking scene. It's like, he's like, no. He's like, oh, I gave up on my God thing. And Dave's like, no, man. When you came over to my house, it was a miracle. And I wanted Josh to just be like, wait, so God gave you epilepsy so I could come to your house and find you? <laughs> <laughs> and bring you ice for your slightly damaged lip. That's that's the God thing you're describing right now. Yeah. Yes. Well, and the thing is, is it? But he's he's like, it's a miracle because you know I laid under that fucking stairs with a broken arm for seven and a half hours, and if you hadn't come, it would have been nine and a half. Like, I mean, <laughs> what? God's that's, getting that's, lazy in his old age. Is what I'm God saying. for you? Mysterious ways. <laughs> <laughs> Save you that two hours. You're welcome. Stop being <laughs> fucking Muslim. That was weird. For a while. <laughs> I've given you a sign. All right. So now mom goes to wake up Josh for school for the last time, last day of school, except this time he's already awake and brushing his teeth because this movie's called Wide Awake. Look at that. He's not a complete asshole for once. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> all right. So that day at school, they're, they're all going to read an essay about the best stuff about the school year. So the whole movie has basically been building to like, like M. Night Shyamalan's kid wrote a fifth grade essay that was good for his age and he made a movie about it. Right. That's what happened here. The whole movie has been building to this and even the movie can't pretend it's inspiring. No. Right. He's like, I used to think a bully was just a bully and a fat kid was just a fat kid. I'm wide awake now. And again, this moment in the movie, everyone does the standing ovation thing. Nope. He's nope. just done. No, everybody's like, okay, well, that's definitely at least an A minus. Very yeah. good. 
Honestly, the only way this moment could have been more anticlimactic if we see the nun look down and like B minus. <laughs> I like the part of his speech was about uh, uh, boners, though. That was yeah. I thought that was like realistic. Yeah. Like he's like, oh shit, man, fifth grade was tough. Like seriously, are you are you guys getting boners like all the time? It's just. <laughs> Constantly, like, right? Okay, hands up. Like, whose dick is randomly hard for hey, no That's not right your now? hand, but hey, you made your point. Look, <laughs> our teacher is revolting. What is that? How is that happening? <laughs> All right, and now the the school year is over, and everyone's getting ready to leave. And Rosie O'Donnell apparently is vamping some more. Right? They're like, "Hey, Rosie, go, you know, close it off with some of that highbrow comedy of yours." They're, they're killing off all it's the 10 little Indians of movies it is it is fucking M. Night Shyamalan sitting in his room going no the movie wasn't about this person or this person or this person we're just getting finales for everyone in the movie yeah no it's just it's it's three minutes of remember all those wacky characters from this movie Jesus yeah the breakfast club close they do a breakfast club close sort of but yeah but but, but nothing happened in the movie so right. it's like remember act two scene three right <laughs> right <laughs> right and then uh, nope that's it all right. stalling but we're not <laughs> but we're not quite done yet you see there's this movie still has to it's m night Shyamalan. we got to pull off the twist ending right so before the school year can end, they have to take the class photo and Rosie O'Donnell counts and she's like, oh, we're missing someone from the class photo. Just then, Josh notices the littler kid, the mute kid that told him about the alarm and shit and warned him the teacher was coming. He notices that kid. And he's like, oh, I'll go get him, teach. And he wanders off. But as he wanders off, Rosie O'Donnell says, no, no, I miscounted. We have everyone. What? What was that what? All about? What? Because... At as it, wait for it, guys. Fucking wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> here it comes. Drum here roll. It comes. Let's do a this is low ass drum roll here. This Let's build great. this. Let's Bruce build this Willis fucking tension. Was dead. Ready for this twist? Time. No. Bum. Yeah. The fucking little mute kid was Jesus or Dude. something. Yeah. Who knows? He's just like, hey, I've been here watching you. And he's like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah. And just so you know, he's fine. He's like, sorry, again, what? <laughs> and then yeah End. and then he's like we gotta go back to class he's like do I and then Josh turns around and he's like disappear like Batman or whatever right right next to all those doors right there that you're showing it's us the <laughs> they couldn't even pull that off <laughs> right. he pans back from the disappearance and there's three open doors yes. right, right there I wanted the kid to pop out sorry did you say something I was just <laughs> <laughs> going back to my class <laughs> I'm in a different class. I was just checking out this dumb waiter that was right here. I just wanted <laughs> to see what it was. The dumb waiter. Yeah. So I'm not Jesus. By the way, the twist ending of this movie is that the little kid could see dead people then apparently, right? Oh, uh, he was tr he was practicing. Yeah. He was trying it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then that's it. I'm not going to bother trying to assign a moral to this movie cuz I can't even assign a plot. So that's going to do it for our review of Wide Awake, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to entice you back next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. My first miracle. Is it snow? I hope so. No, it's cancer. Oh, it's okay. cancer going away. <laughs> All right, so with cancer to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 176 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptic Ride, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot. Nickleville drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. And just to show you how much we've got our shit together this year, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Bat Frank became a podcaster and shoved it in all their fucking faces. <laughs> Damn right he did. Wild card. Freddy was later <laughs> diagnosed with that weird aging disease Robin Williams had in Jack. M. Night Shyamalan would continue <laughs> to make us hate children one movie at a time.
Until Eli, why don't you second. adjust Heath's notes as he come across? <laughs> <laughs> there's weird gaps. They're he, between he scenes. Does, He's putting them between scenes. Yeah, because there's not weird gaps. There's perfectly reasonable gaps that you didn't do for the first part of the notes, but then I got past you in the notes, and then they're reasonable. Noah can attest to this. Tired. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Aren't we all? When a new place happens, that's a new scene. I don't know. <laughs> what, you, what system you use? Well, then we can never do the movie Jumper, can we? <laughs> Sometimes there's entire title cards that you don't new scene. <laughs> I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> getting a little meta. doing so much. Sora scroll bottom, scroll practice. the top right now. Did it? <laughs> I'm faster at at scrolling than Eli. Sorabon. So. <laughs> 683 times 72. Gurf! <laughs> My answers have gotten faster, not more accurate. <laughs> Going for speed. Math is all about speed, not accuracy. It's like a typing test, kids. It's like a typing test. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one blank. You actually get points for blanks. It's like the SAT. It's not like the SAT. Episode 276. <laughs> this show just opens with Noah being like, will we continue watching Christian movies until our brain turns to much? <laughs> Why do our patrons keep getting bigger but the taller amount stays the same? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and never when YouTube decide when Patreon decides that they're only taking Bitcoin. Ring ring ring. Look how wide my eyes are. Look how wide they sound. <laughs> I'm totally fine. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.